gang. Well, I'm in France again, and look at it. Hell, another one in the net, in the sling down there. One there, one there. <laughs> I've put one back. Yeah, it's been a mad night, a totally mad night. All big fish. I went to Belgium with my girlfriend Sue, who's with me, and Bert, of course. Had a night in Belgium with my mate Wesley and a nice barbecue and that, see the family, which was lovely. And then we drove down yesterday morning, got here about mid, early afternoon, and it was warm, so mad runabout, get everything sorted, get out there. Big wind yesterday, big storms coming through, and I sort of rushed putting the rods out. It was like I probably blowing 25, 30 mile an hour. You know, it's not much fun in the old plastic boat trying to get the rods out, but anyway, I got them out. <clears throat> loads and loads of weed out there still. But yeah, I got the rods out and they've all gone. All gone apart. Is that one gone or have I put that? No, that one hasn't gone. That was the only one I couldn't get on shallow ground, this rod here. Ended up putting it out off the corner of that point where all the weed is and that. I managed to get a drop out here. It's about 13, 14 foot. But anyway, that's the only one that ain't gone. Anything shallow and that's gone. And I've got them up to, I don't know, big, the biggest one is nearly 50 pound. But anyway, yeah, lovely times. I'm gonna get, I've just had a coffee. I'm gonna get my tripod out. I've got the old massive mozzie house. Oh, that's all lovely times. This one's a beauty. I'd like a picture of this one, but Sue's in bed and it's still very early. And I've got to get, I've got at least three rods to put back out, two rods to put back out. I bet she thought, God, this French fishing's easy, isn't it? It's just dee, dee, dee. It's mental. Oh, yes, you're very. Yeah, very agreeable. That's a banger, isn't it? <laughs> lovely. Oh, a lovely 40 pounder. I can't remember how big this one was anyway. <laughs> Thomas. You know, a very large mirror carp. Very nice mirror carp, I know, wasn't it? <laughs> now. I might have to wake poor old Sue up. We've got it lovely times here. Got the big mozzie house set up and the double air bed in the bivvy. <laughs> it's, it's lovely times. <laughs> in lovely times. Oh, he's a big cod, here, isn't he? Oh, mega, 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 mega. What a cracker. He gave me the runabout, I can tell you. Lovely, real nice one. Oh my God, I'm looking old, aren't I? I swear to God, if anybody could watch me, there's not a fisherman from the other side of the lake. They must be thinking, what the f is that bloke doing? <laughs> He's up and down in the lake, lifting things up. <laughs> this is a mental one. This one rattled off at, uh, literally as dawn broke, really, first light. <laughs> That's a mad one, isn't it? It's like he's made of solid lead. It weighs a f***ing ton. It is heavier. Heavier than I thought it was. It's certainly a 40 pounder anyway. What another lovely cracking carp, hey? That is a real nice one. I like the odd ones. I've always liked the odd ones. You know, when you catch loads of the ones that look pretty similar, you're like... I think that's why so many of us fish for carp. Not just because they're big and everything that goes with it. Oh. But because they're all different, you know, and a lot of other species. I love me big perch fishing and that. And then once they get to massive sizes perch, mm, he's very lovely. They become very individual, like big carp do. That is a cracker, isn't it? A lovely French carp. Sue's sleeping on oblivious, I don't blame her, she's knackered. <laughs> she never caught a big carp, like, and that bite last night, it rattled off. And she played it for about half an hour. Every time it got near the edge, it just took like another 50 yards. 
but she just played like a pro. I said to her, babe, take all the time in the world. There's nothing for him to look to lose. You know, there's nothing out there to lose him on. Yeah, strange old carp, but a lovely carp. Isn't it amazing? I might catch loads bigger than this, but this will be the one that I remember. Belter. Absolute French belter. So individual, such a character. Mega. Oh, look, he's so fat. He's even got sores like where he rubs along the bottom <laughs> as he feeds, because he's such an odd shape. Right, that's mega. I'm very happy with that one, for sure. Oh, I'm getting old. This is the pick of the bunch. I hate that they call them the pick of the bunch. This was the nicest one from last night, the biggest one, um, 47 pound. I thought it was going to be a 50 pound all day long. Very wide across the shoulders, but a bit empty in the belly. They've had a mega spawn. This is a lovely one. It's got like a big paddle and a few little big cluster of scales. And anyway, oh, I'll show you it. Heavy beast. <laughs> oh, what a lovely carp. A bit greyer, isn't he? He's very nice, make no mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give you a quick look at his. Yeah, he's a real nice one, that one. He's been in the wars before by the look of it. He's got a few lifted scales from his spawning. Well, not even lifted, the edges are rubbed, gone a bit silvery. But they're. Uh... <sighs> <laughs> Cracker, big tail, mega, mega battler. He's a bit empty and a bit twisty. Oh, right, let's get these rods back out. Another nuclear coffee. Ooh. Yeah, real crackers, isn't they? Another nuclear coffee. And then my day will begin proper. <laughs> right, it's nuclear coffee time. Get this rod back out. <sighs> I'm just, I have to do everything on my own here. Oh, look. Look at the lazy little weasels, look. No, no, it's alright, babe, don't worry about me. I'll, uh, I'll do all my own photos, eh? Oh well. Lovely times. Coffee time. Babe, right, bit of a milestone. I went up the shop, come back, left some in charge of the rods. Um, and uh, luckily, just as I got back, it. she said it's been bleeping, but nothing's happening. And the old tip again. <laughs> anyway, the Sue's first 20 kilo carp, 44 pound. And it's a real nice one as well. He's <sighs> a lovely carp, isn't he? That's why I'm picking him up. <laughs> he's very thin, this one, but he was obviously massive before. I think it's one of the ones that's really quite big in, in the spring. One of the ones I caught earlier, a 47, was a 60 pounder a few weeks ago. Anyway, <laughs> that's the bollocks, isn't it? Well done, babe. That's excellent. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get a few more, eh? Oh, Oh, gravel noise. Oh, gravel work is a noisy. It's looking good today. It's looking real good. Really does look lovely. I'm sure there'll be more bites in it. The wind's still blowing down this end. The kit's ready, the boat's ready to go. I've already done a bag and a half of bait. So yeah, it's all good. Lovely times.
Oh, 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 oh. oh. It's a real bad one. It's taking the rods out. It's coming in real severe. This <laughs> oh, bollocks, I've got to put this down. <laughs> wow, well, the old storm went through, the squall, I should say. We survived unscathed, what a result, eh? Hey? Everything's all good. I parked the car just there to give us a bit of protection. It still folded the bib, <laughs> folded the mozzie dome in, but it all was good. Look, everything's dry as a bone. I class that as a win. All we need now is a great big carp. Oh, morning. <laughs> uh, we had a big storm last night. Oh, stop. And uh, yeah, two. Two bites again. Um, this one and a smaller one. The storm was epic, and uh, after it we were a bit giddy. You know what I mean? We'd, we'd escaped with our, <laughs> with our lives and our kit. Um, everything's fine. Nothing got wet. Nothing got well. I left the back of the bivy open. Duh. Anyway, so yeah, the quilts. The quilt was wet. Luckily, I bought bed chairs because we were going to Belgium first. So. Um, I grabbed the sleeping bags off there so we saved the day otherwise we'd have been cold all night and wet. And yeah, bites in the night. Another spawned out heavy fighter. Another lovely carp though, isn't it? Another lovely carp. <laughs> all over the place as I got him out this morning. Oh, yeah, he got me. That's gonna bleed. That's gonna bleed like a pig, master. Oh, do you know what? I bought myself some Crocs before I came out. Never really worn Crocs. I thought they'd do for France, nice and relaxed. They're it. You got wet feet, they fall off, nearly broke me back half a dozen times, and they're always got stones in them. <laughs> rubbish, right? Oh. Listen, you. <laughs> Cracker, another big brown log. <laughs> Beauty. Right, let's get him back. Off to the vets with Bert today. Get him uh, tape wormed and that. And um, yeah, see PCR test tomorrow. Joyous, isn't it? Right, I'm gonna get this one back. And yeah, I'd had to take on another rod. I had a couple of bleeps last night, in the night. Came out and looked, all the bobbins were tight. Didn't think anything else of it. Thought liners, they're obviously on the bait. They were on the bait, clearly. And I came out this morning, and one of them's at like right angles into this bay down to my right. I hadn't pulled it out of the clip, bobbin was still tight up, like between the ring and the rod. I was like, fing hell. It literally kited on a tight line all the way round into the bay to my right. But would you believe, I went in there with a the boat to see, what, see if it was still on the end, and it was. I've got it in the net. It's a little ghost carp, so I'll show you him in a second. <laughs> and here he is, the little terror that took me in the bay in the night. Line was still in the clip, bobbin was still up against the buzzer, between the ring and the buzzer, like nothing had happened. And the line was at like 100 degrees to the right from where it was hooked. Got all the way into the bay and under the pump in the corner. And as I boated in there, I could see him under the surface. Oh, he's fucking still on and he can't believe it. Yeah, little ghost carp, little chunky ghost carp, one for the future. And it's just mad, isn't it? Sometimes, how we land them, I don't know. I should never have got that in in a million years. It should have been like hours gone, but he was just sat there, tethered up to a load of weed. I went out and got him. Lovely signs. Oh, it's looking good tonight. Look at that. Cleared up. We've had some massive rain and that, which always knocks it back a day or so, but it's been brightened up a bit this afternoon. But it's still southwest. It's still pumping in here. It just looks and feels amazing. 
I've got all the rods done lovely. Take Bert to the vet today. As usual, it's fucking proper palaver. We're having a lovely time. Sue's making salad, the barbecue is lit. We've been to car four and got some goodies. It's Sue's turn on the rods tonight. I'm hoping she doesn't catch that big one. <laughs> oh yeah. We are living the dream, Rodney. <laughs> yeah, he's lovely, isn't he? A lovely carp. <laughs> now he's going to behave. <laughs> lovely. Cracker. Have a big scale on this side on his shoulder. There you go. What a beauty, eh? Oh, oh. Right, that's enough of him. Let's get him back. And Sue's got one to show you. I don't think I kept any more last night. No, I didn't. I was putting them back. It was one after the other. It starts early. When you go to bed and you get one just after dark, you think, mmm, here we go. Yeah, and sure enough, like, they were going one after the other. Right, lovely times. Right, this was Sue's best one from last night. It's been a bit wild, so I'm not, uh, I'm just going to show you it. He's a really nice common, isn't he? Lovely one. But really wild as well. cracker. This is a nice surprise, nice surprise. I put the rods out again this morning. I got up like autopilot, do you know what I mean? I had coffee and a fag and then I had four rods to put back out. I've done all them and then remembered I've got to go for a bloody PCR test today in, in the nearby town at midday. So I was like all panicked, gutted. I put all the rods out, rebaited them and everything. I had to reel them in. Anyway, Sue went round to the little lodge thing to, to do a couple of bits and while she was gone this has rattled off like bright sunshine lovely breeze now it, look, it looks good for it uh, and this rod did a bite last night so it's not surprising it went again and this one fought really hard I thought it was going to be a 50, 50 pounder when it, when it sort of surfaced oh, oh come on car you've been laying there quietly while I've been chatting oh, he's a real nice one I thought <laughs> 43 pounder. Oh, just under 20 kilo actually, but he's a cracker, isn't he? And he gave me a real well, and I was panicking because like, Sue was on the way back round. I was thinking, geez, it's going to be close to time, like, you know, it's like in France, you miss your appointment, they'll be like, sorry. Anyway, it was worth putting them out again. That's what Sue said. Sure, it was worth putting them out again, wasn't it? Yes, it was, babe. Cracker. Oh, I'll show you the other side of him because he's such a lovely carp. He's got some starbursty scales on him. It's real nice, isn't it? Beautiful carp. Lovely times. We'll get this back. Quickly get the machine folded up and off to the local town, get our PCR test done and then we can get back and relax. And uh, we're forecast massive winds tonight, huge winds in fact. Um, I'm hoping the old Mozzie Dunn's going to be able to take it, but it took that squall the other day so fingers crossed eh. It's the last evening, I haven't been filming much because we've been having a lovely time and just minded our own business. Um, but it's been pretty good. I think I'm up to six. This is 17 I've had now, 17 fish. Um, but yeah, nothing for 24 hours nearly. Yesterday evening, same time, I caught one. And uh, expecting big things, do you know what I mean? I've been getting average three or four a night. And uh, yeah, it was flat calm last night. The wind dropped off, nothing. I saw for the first time since I've been here, I saw carp show on the bar in front of me where I'm fishing uh, small ones. And I lost something just in the dark. And I thought, oh, it's, this is it, it's going to go off. And that was it, nothing. Um, and this morning it was the, like the display of death. Never seen as many big carp jumping right up the other end. Duh. Uh, nobody up there. <laughs> 
Anyway, wind picked up again this afternoon, 35 mile an hour gusts I think we got, and it's obviously brought a few down. Hopefully this isn't the last of the night. Oh come on. His little tail, look. <laughs> He's a cracker, isn't he? Oh, don't get lemon, don't get lemon. Don't get lemon, come on. Yeah. <laughs> He's a great one, isn't he? I like him. He's cracking. And let's hope he's not the last of the night, eh? Ooh, oh, let's get you back, mate. Well, last morning. So he's got another PB. Look at that. What a cracker. Last night, we hoped it was going to happen. And the wind turned up in our favour. And yeah, five carp. I don't know if that's the biggest one, but it's very close to it. Well done, babe. That's an absolute belter, that is. Beautiful big carp. Well done. Oh. Great trip. Woo, Thomas. Yeah, it's pretty warm this morning. Mind you, I've got the warm, the warmer on. My morning, fellow carp idiots. It's me again, and I am. Um, yeah, I was last out end of July with Sue. Had a fantastic trip. Caught loads of carp. I think I've had over 50 carp now from that farm lake in two trips, which is like really good going. Uh, really enjoyable place, but you know me two trips to the same place and I'm uh, it's time for a change um, so yeah I'm on my way through the flatlands on my way to brother Wesley's for a night um, my starting or usually my end is starting a stopping point for most of my big trips uh, but this isn't a big trip it's only a week um, and I'm not really going to be fishing at Wes's this week I'm planning to have a few days um, mooching about in Belgium it's been a while I was planning to go to France, but after looking at Google Earth, all the new pictures, like it was just a sea. Every picture I looked at, every lake was a sea of carp anglers and bivvies. And you know what? I've had enough of that. Shit. I don't want to do that. And basically, if it's done, if it's got any form of big carp lake in France, past or present, um, it's not really going to be worth visiting, especially this time of year. It's mid September. The world and his dad is in France looking for easy times. Um, and I really can't be doing with it. Um, I just want a nice bit of fishing, nice bit of peace and quiet, same as always. A few lovely carp, not too many anglers along the way. Uh, which is always easier said than done, isn't it? So anyway, on to, on to Wesley's. It's early morning, I left home at two o'clock. There's lots to get across to you. And as usual, not, not lots of time to do it in. So yeah, hopefully I'll be getting enough footage this week uh, with brother Alain to get another vlog out um, the vlogs have been cool the last one I did with a land sadly all of the um, all of the data corrupted on the card uh, and we lost a really good vlog it was gonna be it was like two or three hours worth um, which is a shame but these things happen uh, also lost footage of loads of really lovely big car but again these things happen uh, yeah so off to Wesley's for a night sort my out, going to do a bit of baiting up and looking with a land. Probably spend one, maybe two nights at Wesley's, I don't know yet. I'm going to be getting around and having a mooch. Uh, and then off to a new lake, big lake, public lake for me, never fished it. Lovely times, not too far from Wesley's, half hour down the road. So of course the plan as always was going to be a few days in France, northern France. I've been like looking at all the old valleys we used to fish and all the old lakes in those valleys. But so many lakes have blossomed out of nowhere in the last few years. They're digging the gravel again. A lot of those lakes are now full of lakes. A lot of those valleys are now full of lakes. And trying to work out which ones were the old ones from memory, which my memory is shot to bits, is difficult. I used to have an old Michelin atlas that I kept and used as the, we used to call it the bible everywhere I went I'd mark down with a little add a little code to it um, you know stuff that's worth revisiting stuff that's been vidon strained and the fish have gone and they've restocked with new fish all these little things you know stuff happens quick in France four or five years is a lifetime as, as regard fish growing you know you can go to a lake with doubles and 
a certain type of angler fish in there, you write it off instantly, but go back two or three years later, those fish are big and everybody, everything's changed. There's big carp anglers there, the lakes are changed. It's really, really weird. Um, certainly in my time visiting France, it's changed 20 times over. Every time I go back, it seems to be different. So yeah, no France this trip. Zooming in on Google Earth, every single lake was surrounded by bivvies and anglers. And that's the thing nowadays, there's so many more carp anglers. Anglers bloomed in the UK, but it's also really bloomed in Holland, Germany, Austria. They're carp, they're like rats carp anglers. I'm sick to death of them. Surely they will start exterminating them soon because they're like a nuisance, a pest. So yeah, all I'm trying to do is what I've always done, try and find fishing that inspired me all those years ago. You know, turning up to a lake that looks like it's never been fished. All of that is really a thing of the past, but we still try because, well, that's the dream, isn't it? You're always chasing the dream. And the dream was quiet, unspoiled fishing. So we're still on that buzz and we're still trying. Obviously, I haven't shot anything since I was out with Sue. Been really busy at home building, building my man cave at the minute, which is a massive building, costing me a fortune in money and time. Um, and yeah, I'm just, you know what it's like, if you don't take the opportunity to get out when you can get out, it'll be taken from you. There'll be another lockdown or some bullshit. The COVID tax is still strong. Every trip is costing me a fortune. It's all such bollocks, but there you go. Like, it's just become another way of taxing you. That's what this is all about now, it seems, especially in Europe. So, off to Wesley's. I've been on the go since 2 a.m. I'm really tired. I need to get some breakfast. I've had a couple of coffees on the way, but that's never enough. As soon as I get to Wesley's, Wes, as soon as I get to Wesley's, I'm going to grind those magic beans and um, start my day off properly. Well, coffee's on. On professional carpist, ain't I? I'm here. I got here, realised I didn't have a lighter to light my kettle, which is bad karma. So I had to go to the shop. Didn't have a mask, mate. He shouted at me, so I shouted at him. Called him a COVID idiot. Um, but they're still pretty hot on it over here anyway. I got a couple of sticks out, slashed out to oblivion. Wesley said he'd seen some out there this morning and they're out on the shallow bit, probably yeah. 160 turns or something. Both went out bizarrely, bang on first time. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna sit and do my bit, lovely times. This is Renard. Renard is a punisher. He's punishing me to throw his stick. Renard is Owl's dog, my friend Alain. It's off, Renard. I'm not playing, it's too early. Anyway, yeah, you can see, change of scenery. New vista. Nick loves a new vista. And uh, yeah, I uh, left the home at two in the morning, drove to my syndicate lake, fished a night in my friend's garden. Um, like I've said previously, I filmed there. I wasn't going to bother filming there again. I didn't catch anything anyway. I did, did 24 hours, like basically I, I was knackered, slept. All afternoon I was out looking at other venues with Alain. Um, went back, did the night. Actually really expected to catch something. Um, was seeing carp out there. Uh, didn't catch anything. Anyway, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I wasn't filming there anyway. Um, and yesterday afternoon we left to come to this lake. No, Renard. I'm talking. So yeah, we came here and I didn't film yesterday evening because well, it's us time, we had a lovely time. Nice barbecue, a bit of a fire, rum and cokes, just music. We had a brilliant night, really, really good night. Um, I didn't film any of that either. <laughs> I thought to myself, right, I won't film till the morning. I'm gonna have a little bit of Nick time. It's my holiday after all, I guess. And uh, yeah, went to bed, a bit drunk. What were we drinking? Oh, we, we, we were drinking rum and cokes and then we started on ice cold bottles of uh, rosé, which was just lovely, but I was ready for bed by 10 o'clock. In fact, I think we did go to bed about 10 o'clock after 10. It wasn't exactly a late night, but as you can hear from my voice, <clears throat> it was quite a heavy night. And in the night, I'm a jammy sod, and I? Um, I kept getting liners on one rod. We, we split our rods up. This is one of my rods and one of ours rods. We always fish like this, it's the best way, alternate rods. So I tossed a coin, I got the left hand side. So in our swim next door, which I'll show you in a minute, I've got my rod, then ours rod, then my rod here, which is the left rod, and then ours rod. And that's how we do it. Um, 
that way no one misses out on any action if one area is doing it. It's just the best way and the most enjoyable way of fishing. Yeah, lovely lake. Anyway, as I said, we fish alternate rods. Oh, this is our swim. My rod on the left, because I tossed the coin, got heads. So left, starts left. Meow, meow. Only two rods each on this syndicate. And yeah, it's looking lovely this morning. The carp were pretty quiet. We see quite a few yesterday evening while we were sat there having lovely times. But in the night, anyway, one's rattled off and I can't really <laughs> take claim too much credit for that capture because Al put us on the spot. We've got a rod each on that spot and rod each on the spot in my swim. Um, and I've got one of the real old original ones. I'm a jammy sod and I called the English fish, which is quite apt because I am English. Um, yeah, 42 pound. <laughs> oh, it's a lovely time. So anyway, I've got another night here uh, on this lovely lake. I'm quite happy with what I caught. Hopefully I will get one now. And uh, tonight we'll have a lovely time again with a barbecue and nice wine and that. And I'll probably film a bit later because I didn't yesterday. Um, so I'll show you this lovely carp in a bit. And, uh, and yeah, maybe have a mid-morning snooze. I'm pretty knackered. It was a long night. A lot of alcohol. Um, you know, some people are used to the old beer. I'm not. I don't drink beer at home. I only drink red wine. So when I come out here, the boys try and kill me every single trip with beer. And like the first night, Wesley, I must have had five or six little bottles of beer. I was smashed and I've been up since two. I was literally falling asleep on my feet. And yeah, last night, rum and wine and I don't know how they do it. Anyway, it still feel, I still feel, I'm still slurring, and I? I still don't feel too bad considering. Um, made better by the fact I've got a beautiful carp in the bag. Wicked. It's lovely here, isn't it, Belgium? Always green and a bit unkempt and beautiful. <sighs> Mega. Lovely morning. Lovely old car, ain't it? Beautiful. He's a cracker out. I'm a jammy sod, and I, like I said, I can't take much credit for this. It was our spot. He said, "Wang it out there, 14 rats. Wrap it around them <laughs> sticks. Wang it out there, 14 rats." And we put out the rod side by side. But yeah, the English fish for the English man. You got to be chuffed with that, a 42 pounder. One of the oldest ones in the lake, one of the last originals. I'm a jammy sod, I tell you. But I ain't knocking it. Not with a carp like that. He's a cracker, isn't he? Brilliant. If I look a bit dishevelled, it's because I am. Well, we both are. We had a bit of an heavy night on it. But yeah, what a thing, eh? Beautiful carp. Absolutely beautiful. What a cracker, eh? What an absolute cracker. I'm very happy to have caught that. I didn't deserve it one bit. <laughs> but sometimes, the old carp got a smile on you, didn't they? What a lovely thing. Oh. Yeah, Mega, what a lovely carp. I'm guessing they must be as old as me, Al. Yeah, he is. Absolutely but he, amazing. But he looks younger. <laughs> yeah, the car, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Wicked, mate. <sighs> Lovely times. Wicked. Nice one, Al.
Another lovely morning, but no fish. It was very clear, big moon last night, lake was flat calm, look the absolute bollocks. Fish were showing, but no bitings. Yet yeah, they've been on us this morning. These rods out here, out towards them houses, have, uh, there's been plenty showing over them, but no bites. So anyway, it's Saturday morning now, we're gonna be off. I'm going back to my syndicate for a couple of nights. I'm gonna sling a load of bait out before we leave and uh, come back here for a couple of nights before I go home. Hopefully by then the old bait would have worked a bit of magic, hey? Let's hope so, wicked. Uh, there's always something going on. Looks like their marquee's gone in the lake. <laughs> look, they're all swimming after it, look. You jokers. Oh, here comes matey in the boat to rescue it. <laughs> Cheerio. If it flips over, it's all over, isn't it? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, there's a rescue taking place. <laughs> Are the two boats out oh, there? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you got to laugh, haven't you? Oh, here comes the nippers in the bib. <laughs> it's chaos over here sometimes, but I love it. I've not got any rods out, but I will do it some. Oh no, I've got a rod out. I've got a rod out. Where is it? I've got one down there. Slung out. Wind's coming at me. It's actually lovely times. It's cool. Well, as, as you can hear, typical Nick. It's looking nice out there tonight. What's going on with me autofocalus? Something's happening. Anyway, I can't really see a lot, can you? I'm not a joker. Anyway, my rods are done. But in true Belgian style, as you can hear, I'm sat in my tent drinking. What am I drinking tonight? I'm an holiday anyway. Duh, Beaujolais Villages. I don't know what year it is. Didn't even, didn't even check. Look, they've had me over in 2019, what'd I tell you? Anyway, I'm gonna sit here listening to all those people having a lovely time. Can you feel it? <laughs> Wicked, I'll see you later. All my friends, I've got stupid dogs. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> You're an idiot. An idiot dog. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. There you go. Nice one from this morning. Lovely common for the future. Cracking carp. Give me a mega bite. Wes and I were sat here having a coffee and a croissant. One of them lurched over, they were showing closer and closer, I suppose they had to go. But yeah, lovely one, eh? Nice to see it. What a cracker, eh? Sat there, just had a lovely lunch, Kelly made us chicken and chips. And I was sitting there feeling a bit bloated and a bit if I'm honest, Wes has been feeding me duplers. And uh, yeah, out of the blue, calmed off, fish are still showing, but very occasionally. Rattled off of a really lovely old original one, and one that I've not caught which is always a bonus. Wes was like, you've caught that one. I was like, I haven't caught this one. What was he with, scraper 30? Yeah. But a real lovely old one. Wicked, eh? What a cracker. I love these old carp. He's got a beautiful body and shape. <laughs> Wicked, eh? There's a dog's head.
<laughs> oh, beautiful start to the day. That old sun is red as red can be. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Well, Oh, looking, looking. The perfect start to the day. It's the first time this trip I've had to put a jumper on. I've already had two coffees. <coughs> Wes caught one just before light in the deeper water. He's up today, take Nipper to school. My rods are out. Nothing since yesterday. But you know what, it don't matter, does it? I'm having a lovely time, I love it here. I'm quite happy to sit here, big pit, fish crashing out and stuff. Yeah, it's really cool. But yeah, jumpers on, means... Oh, Trey Bolt this year, Trey Bolt. Yeah, first, first time I've had to wear a jumper this trip, which pretty much signals it's the end, isn't it? Or close to it. Autumn's on the way. But I'm always cool with that. I like the cold. Keeps the anglers away. <laughs> right, I'm going to have this lovely. Oh, yeah, look at that. Don't get any better. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, oh, no, Nick. What have you done? Oh, oh, no. Oh, 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 Oh no, there's bits of grass on me crop monsieur. This is not how I planned it. You stupid man. Anyway. That will be epic, I can assure you, in a couple of seconds. Well, he never went. Oh, it's going to steam up lovely. Last night I definitely wished I hadn't bought my crisp packet sleeping bag with me. <laughs> oh my god, look at me, I've just woken up. Hmm. Yeah, what a night. Anyway, two bites, both commons, both off the long rod on the shallow. I had no bait around it for 24 hours. It made no sense, nine and three o'clock in the morning. Um, and I saw a massive pike. Jesus, it was massive. I'm standing there playing the common, the second one. I've looked down in the edge, got my head torch on, there's a absolutely giganticus pike sat there. Oh yeah, lovely times this morning. Beautiful. Oh, the magic beans are much needed. Yes, yeah, so I was sitting there watching this enormous pike completely not paying attention to the carp that had gone well left. Could have cut me off like an idiot. I'm going to start jumping in a minute. I'll go out and have a look. But yeah, I've seen two huge carp in my life. I told you the old, the old lens is steaming up. There we go. I've seen two huge carp in my life. Both of them in Belgium. Both from lakes around here. Uh, but yeah, that one last night was... Whew, I don't know how big it was. Massive. In the top three pike I've seen in my life anyway, it just ambled off, but I really was quite shocked. It was a giant. It buzzed me right up. Be back for a pike trip at this rate. <laughs> Look at this one, he's got a, a real hook mouth, like the old Kemp common that used to be in here. I think they called this one the Kemp. But anyway, yeah, he's a lovely one. 30 pounder now already, amazing, isn't it? It was just the rods left. Just the rods left. They've been showing like dolphins out there in the middle. And yeah, there had to be another bite in it. I kept hoping. There's no bait out there, just singles rechucked each time. Lovely times, off somewhere new again. Well, not new, the place I fished a few days ago. I've got two nights back there and then home. Lovely times. Oh. 
Ah, new day, new lake. Here I am. Already got a couple of rods out. That's Renard, that idiot. He's punishing me to death already. Um, but yeah, same like I fished the other day. We were. Where were we? Pretty much dead opposite, I guess, over there. But guess what? There's somebody in our spot. Oh well. <laughs> These things are sent to try us. Anyway, nothing venture, nothing game. We've come around this side and we've set up. And, uh, yeah, it's nice out there. I've got a couple of nice drops. Reynard's punishing me for a stick. Typical, isn't it? I don't bring a dog and everyone else's dog punishes the life out of me. Anyway, yeah, it's looking nice. Got two nights here now before I head home. And I've got one out there that we've got sort of sharing a spot between us, the crest of a drop off, not very deep. And I've slashed one out towards the tower, they say. Of course they do, they would do, wouldn't they? That's where Ed Run would cast. And uh, I've slashed them out there long, but to the right of the tower, out that sort of area, and got really nice hard drops. So I've left it, left it as a single. See what's out there. I haven't seen anything as yet. I know I did see one, we saw one on the wind line earlier. Just roll over. But yeah, it's a lovely lake, isn't it? I like it here. It's looking good. I like all the houses that surround it. Look at it. <laughs> Typical Belgian, there's all sorts. But yeah, it looks real good. Real good. Oh look, surprise, surprise. I'm Punisher. <laughs> it's a lovely morning. Let's have a look in our swim. That was a good night. I wanged out two singles to oblivion. Got an hard drop on one of them. And I had two carp in the night. I can you believe it? Oh, our swim is very photogenic. Look at that. Lovely. It looks cracking this morning. That's incredible. That is incredible. I'll work out whether it's a massive one or a... Or Mr. Sturgeon. Or Mr. Sturgeon. No, it's no Sturgeon. Yeah. I've never had a Sturgeon go off. That was an incredible <laughs> bite, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Fantastic. This one's going right. I don't know if that's better or worse. <laughs> Feels like a proper one now. Yeah. Huh? Savage take, wasn't it? What a take. <laughs> that was wanged out. See, that wasn't hard, hard. The softy part. Yeah, well, yeah, but it was all right there. It got a donk, you know. See, obviously, just a krill active and a little pop-up on its own is, is more than good enough. Mm -hmm. Attraction-wise, you know. Oh, he hit, he hit something on the bottom there. <sighs> There's a cracker from last night. A mad night, we had a lovely barbecue and some wine and I slashed them out there, well, I slashed one out there like a long way out, 130 or 140 yards, something like that and got a bit of a donk and it was a bit shallower so I left that and it went at half 11 with a little scaly mirror, a lovely one anyway, I whashed it back out there again obviously in the dark, same sort of area, got a drop no, I didn't get a drop, I jigged it a couple of times, lifted it and dropped it and got it to go clonk and left it and then this bloke turned up at three in the morning. What a cracker, eh? A lovely car, real lovely car. Give me a right old scrap. Anyway, I'll just show you the other side of him. Oh. And as we were just about to get him out to do the pictures, I had another take. You'll see, probably see a bit of footage of me playing one. It absolutely rattled off. I'd slashed it back out there again, long way. And whatever it was, I just lost it. But I've got a feeling it was a real big one. It, I didn't have a lot of control over it and they kite like 
really badly and either side of me here is like a disaster. <sighs> anyway, I lost it. But you can't cry over spilt milk. What a lovely car, pay. I'm well happy with that. I'm going to do a little bit in the sun in a minute just because we're hiding in the bushes here to get a bit of dark. But I'll do a bit of him in sunlight as I put him back. What a cracker. And what a mad night. Three takes. You've got to be happy with that. Well, as much as I hate it, it's home tomorrow. I'll be pleased to see Sue and Bert. I've really missed Bert this trip, but you know, I just can't bring him every time. But anyway, yeah, home tomorrow, as much as I detest it, I've got to do this bull****, which is more COVID tax. But now it's in the form of a self-take PCR test. I've not done one of these before. For the last four, or is it the fifth trip this year, this one, or fourth or fifth trip? Um, I've had to go to a laboratory somewhere, even in Belgium or France, and like leave the day, leave the lake for a day, two days before I'm meant to leave anyway. And it feels horrible. It's almost like the end of the trip. It feels like I don't, I don't like any of it. But COVID tax is COVID tax. If I, if, you know, if I'm not going to do as I'm told and stay at home, then I've got to, uh, I've got to bear the brunt. And the bearing the brunt at the moment is the cost of it all and the boller cake, and it is monumental on both fronts. <laughs> anyway, I'll get it done. Enjoy the rest of today. Hopefully there's a bite or two left in it for us. Three bites last night, eh? What a result. A little scaly, like a double row linear stocky thing, a double figure one that I put back at three o'clock. I've got some pictures on my phone just to show how. Then that real nice grey one at three o'clock or half three or something. And then um, this morning as we're sat here making a cup of coffee, I had an absolute of a take, a real funny take. Drop real slag, then hit the rod and nearly yank, yank the rod in. And I played that for ages, all the way back slowly. It went right rather than left. Either way, it's terrible. Huge snags of death down to the left or around even more snaggy point where Al's fishing around to the right. It went right, kept going, kept going. Fell off for no reason. It was obviously a real big one. Anyway, you can't cry over spilt milk, like I said earlier. It's just one of them things. But yeah, it smarted a bit. I really wanted to see it. <laughs> There's a nice mixed stock in here um, and some really very desirable old ones still. Um, and yeah, it would have been nice, but hey, it's all excitement, isn't it? But anyway, yeah, the up point, I use um, I use cod rigs when I'm in Belgium and France, more and more, almost all the time now, a similar sort of rig, a big hook bait, little tiny pop-up on the top, snowman style, and a, and a big curved shank hook with a nice gap between the bait and the, re uh, the hook and the bait. Um, and it works really well, it keeps the bream at bay, but it really catches the cart, it seems to catch them everywhere. Um, and that's what I've been doing here, fishing them sort of snowmans, if you like, wanged out into oblivion, where they were showing yesterday um, and the one I lost like they don't come off on that rig the hook holds are always amazing them curved shank six is <laughs> epic hook uh, and the points are strong and long and they go in they never come out or very very rarely and that one when I when it had come off that big one it had obviously um, I thought it hooked it deep like it had obviously had that it was, I'm fishing quite long links because it's a bit softer at range um, and I thought just from the bite that it hooked it deep and the fight it felt funny like they do when you hook them deep in the mouth and um, yeah when the cook came back the point was bent right over oh, that's a very rare occurrence of them hooks so anyway that was that and now it's back to enjoy oh Renard's back oh there he goes yeah no Bert this trip I'll be looking forward to getting back to him and Sue. I really miss Bert, but I can't bring him all the time. The cost is just spiralling out of control with all your COVID tax and extra measures and extra costs. And like just to take Bert, like I said last time, he's upwards of 200 quid every time. So while I like to bring him on the big trips, you know, the, the weeks and the shorter trips, um, it just it just seems madness, like it costing me a fortune. Anyway, I'll be very pleased to get back to him. Um, and yeah, see the day out today, it looks the bollocks. Hopefully there'll be a bite more in it for me now. Lovely times. Well, last morning. Full moon proper last night. And no bites, unsurprisingly. And they were pretty quiet. I did hear a couple jumping. And they were out, sort of, in that manner. I'm sort of fishing over here, but... Um, yeah, just a couple of splashes in the night, all quiet, but it's going to be a beautiful morning. Uh, I've just had a coffee. I'm going to start packing up. I've got my, I'm going to leave here by 10. So there's another, there's still a chance. Now the old full moon's gone down, there'll be a chance. Something will happen this morning, hopefully. But if not, it doesn't matter. I've had a great trip, always, as always. I'm going to, um, I'm looking forward to getting home, seeing my girl and my dog. 
that's going to be amazing. I've got my daughter at the weekend, fantastic. And uh, a big trip in next month for me, mate Trev, to the south of France. That should be a real good and back to the proper adventuring style fishing. And a two weeker on my own in November, so there'll be plenty of stuff to film. Um, but this one has not really been so much of a vlog trip, it's been a bit of an holiday. Uh, I felt I needed it. And the trouble is, if you don't go, you wish you had gone, you know, so it's always good to make the trip. But I'll be back before you know it. I'll see you in a minute. Right, back on the tunnel, another trip done. Um, I feel bloated and broken and poisoned with beer. <laughs> the boys love trying to kill me with, with Dupla, which is the, the Belgian beer of choice for the Cup East. Um, so yeah, great trip. Um, really enjoyed seeing Wes and Al. Again, I said it before, like this sort of fishing is all about upstairs. Like um, with everything that's going on in the world, you either, you'll either like you know it will either get you down or it just gets you motivated to do what you like to do because you know, God willing, you never know when you're not going to be able to do it again. Um, whether that's COVID or whatever, whatever next load of bull we get faced with. Um, so yeah, it was really good to go. Um, my advice to you is if you can go, go, because you just never know when you might not be able to, as, as it's been proved to us recently. Um, so yeah, you know, for me that mindset is everything. I spoke about mindset before when I did a podcast recorder, um, and they seem to have taken that on as their strap line at the minute. Um, but it's true, you know, big carp fishing is about mindset. You can't sit there um, when you're not in the right headspace to sit there. Um, most people don't even seem to be enjoying themselves, you know, these days, let alone uh, like living for the fishing. But I had to, uh, you know, I've been at home a long time, I've been building and stuff, and I'm a obsessive full-time angler as such. Um, and I love my trips, I love my September trips, and there is something magical about Belgium, the lowlands in general, you know, the autumn is really, really, um, can be misty and quite cool and lovely, um, and I love the countryside, I love the Belgian houses, I just love everything about it. I get a different buzz from just driving around in Belgium, like in the mornings when it's cool and misty, I feel like I'm going fishing. Um, there's something special about Belgium. Anyway, I'm not going to waffle. I'm looking forward to getting home, seeing Beatron. I haven't seen him for a week. Uh, I'm not used to being out without my dog or my girlfriend. It's been quite difficult. The boys are flat out building at my house. Um, so I'd be interested to see what work they've done. Um, and now it's get home. My hair really needs to cut in like. Now it's get home, detox, get the beer out of my system. Um, another great trip original cart from both the lakes I fished you gotta be happy with that um, I don't know how many bites I had in total 10 if that 9 10 good weeks fishing really good weeks fishing the fishing at Wesley's is getting more and more interesting every time I go um, the fish are wising up they're getting bigger um, and they were showing and showing and showing in the outer bounds I say the outer bounds it's just a bit of the lake there we can't get to them it's not actually out of bounds um, but you could see as the moon as the moon came to fall, they were jumping more and more and more. And I wondered how much of it was just weather or pressure or whatever. Uh, but actually, it was just it was the big shift was about to happen where they migrate down the lake. They sent spend the winter at the other end from where they railed up. And sure enough, just as I left Wesley's, that fish were jumping. I've never seen them jump like it. Um, and how much of it was like the full moon and how much of it was the big shift. Well, it was the big shift, wasn't it? Like now they're all down that end or the majority of swap tens, um, all driven by the moon, no doubt. But yeah, really interesting. I can't wait to get back. I'm back in October, as I said. I've got a trip with my mate Trev. Can't wait, looking forward to that. South of France, proper adventure. Um, and then again in November, if I've still got the, uh, the will to go, it's been really difficult. I, I did mention it, I think I might have mentioned it on, on the way out, where I've been looking at Google Earth. And uh, all the lakes, pretty much every lake in France, um, had bivvies and cars around it. And I found it a real, I found it very uh, disheartening. Not demotivating, because I love my fishing, uh, and part of it is just the fact that I'm an islander and I'm escaping my island to go and do what I love elsewhere. Um, 
but just the sheer amount of fishermen, it's becoming overwhelming and it's uh, it's not sustainable um, <clears throat> and when you do the sort of fishing that I like to do people destroy it very quickly anglers especially so what am I gonna do Ooh, I don't know do you know what I mean I'm thinking about I had a good chat with me mates in Belgium I'm thinking about trying to get a couple of Belgian syndicate tickets sort of quieter ones and a few public waters in Belgium that I can flit around on when I'm in the manor if that makes sense Oh, I stink. I'm ready for a bath, I tell you. I get home in an early night. I'm really ready for it. Um, yeah, my, I can see my fishing changing. Oh, we're leaving. I've got away early. I did the old, uh, for any of you lot that are a bit smart, as you get on the tunnel, I looked at the thing and my thing, my, I was not meant to be getting until the, it's 20 past 12, not the 20, I was booked on the 20 past 1. Didn't even give me the option to get an earlier one. So as I drive around to where the girls stop you and last to see your thing, I had all the windows open and I just let it go out my hand and it flew out. They saw it fly out my hand. I pulled out, I was like, ah, oh, it's just gone out the window. And they were like, oh, no, no, they never worry. Go on, off you go, get on the <laughs> <laughs> little things, I tell you. Little things please little minds, they say, don't they? Well, it's true. Things like that tickle me. I'm like, I'm going to be home an hour earlier. Cheers.